Hi everybody, Mr. Gerard here. Um, we're going to go through a couple different examples of how to find zeros of polynomials using synthetic division and our calculators and possible rational zeros theorem. So um, let's just kind of walk, walk through the steps right now and then uh, we'll talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra and then we'll do a couple examples. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're always going to list out the possible rational zeros. Now some of you might say, well is this a youth, useless step and it's truly not because it gives us an idea of what we're looking for on a graph or what we can use if we do synthetic division. Um, once we get into some more challenging problems I could give you one where the only rational zero that shows up might be like one-third and if you don't know what the possible rational zeros are then that won't help you out. Okay so we're going to go through and we're going to list the possible rational zeros we're going to check the graph to find an actual rational zero Use that rational zero in synthetic division to get down to where we have linear factors and a quadratic factor. And then we'll set those factors equal to zero and solve. Once we do that, then we'll be able to go ahead and set up our quadratic factor and either factor it to get some rational zeros or use a quadratic formula, which will give us two irrational zeros or two non-real zeros. And so those are our steps that we're going to take on each one. Now, kind of an important thing here is the fundamental theorem of algebra. That's why they call it the fundamental theorem. Um, when we have a polynomial that has a degree that's greater than zero, which means that it's a polynomial, um, and we set it equal to zero, then there's at least one complex zero. The corollary to that is probably more important where it says the degree will be equal to the number of zeros. Um, that we have just so long as we count double zeros twice and triple zeros three times. So if I'm given a problem where it looks like this, let's just make one up. We're going to say f of x equals 3x to the fifth minus 2x squared plus 1. My degree of this polynomial is 5. And what that means is that, that there is 5 complex zeros and that's going to become pretty important as we move through this information. So let's get right into a couple examples and we'll see what what we come up with here. Here's our first polynomial f of x equals x to the third plus 5x squared minus 4x minus 20. Now the first thing we're going to do is list our p over q's. p is factors of 20 so we're going to say plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10, and plus or minus 20. Bottom is the factors of our leading coefficient, which in this case is 1, even though it's not there. So we would put plus or minus 1. Now, because all of this would be over 1 anyways, these are my possible rational zeros. Now, in the old days, what we'd have to do is we'd have to go through and we'd start with 1 and negative 1 and work our way through and we'd do synthetic division. We'll do that problem this way. So 1, 5, negative 4, negative 20. Those are my coefficients. Skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Add is 6. Multiply up is 6. Add down is 2. Multiply up is 2. And that would give us negative 18. This means it's not a 0. So we always put a good sign there. We're going to put a sad face because that's not good. Let's try negative 1. Negative 1, 1, 5, negative 4, and negative 20. Yikes. All right, bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Add 4, negative 4, negative 8, 8. That's negative 12. That's another sad face. Okay, let's try 2. If we try 2, we got 1, 5, negative 4, and negative 20. Skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2, that's 7, 14, 10, 20, 0. That's good. All right, we got a 0 now, and we know that 2 is a 0. That's a good thing, okay? Now what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. I'm going to say x minus 2 is a factor. And because I took this polynomial and divided by x minus 2 down here, I now have 
x squared plus 7x plus 10 left over. So x minus 2 times x squared plus 7x plus 10 is what this polynomial is broken down into. And I now have a linear factor and a quadratic factor. And so what I want to do is I want to try and factor the quadratic. Well, in doing that, I know I got x and x. And I need two numbers that multiply together to give me 10. Add together to give me 7. Luckily, it's 5 and 2. And now I have my three linear factors. I can set each one equal to 0 and say x equals 2 x plus 5 equals 0, so x equals negative 5, and x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals negative 2. So our zeros are negative 5, negative 2, and 2. Negative 5, negative 2, and 2. Okay, let's move on to another example. Another example is right here. It's x to the fourth minus 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2x plus 2. Now the degree is 4. With the degree being 4, we know there's going to be four zeros. So we're going to look to see, all right, where are my four zeros? Now I can list my p's over q's, and this one here is actually going to be pretty easy again because p is a factor of 2, so that'd be plus or minus 2. q is a factor of 1, which would just be plus or minus 1. And so we got plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. This wouldn't be too bad to go through and try and do using synthetic division. But let's look at the graph. If I look at the graph here, you can see that I have a 0 right here at negative 1 and a 0 right here at positive 1. And with those being my two zeros, that's going to help me out when I go to try and solve this. Because I know that if 1 is a 0 x minus 1 is a factor, and to find what goes in this set of parentheses, I can do synthetic division. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's do 1 in the bracket, 1, negative 2, negative 3, 2, and 2. Skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 1. 1 times 1 is 1, that's negative 1, that's negative 1, that's negative 4, that's negative 4, that's negative 2, that's negative 2, that's 0. That's good, and that means that x to the third minus x squared minus 4x minus 2 is my other polynomial. Now, I noticed that there were two zeros, one at 1 and one at negative 1. So not only is x minus 1 a factor, like right here, we also have x plus 1 as a factor. Now, what goes in here, what goes in here is what we get when we divide this polynomial by x plus 1. Well, what do you know? Our coefficients are already down here. So we can say negative 1, skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus negative 1 is negative 2. Uh, negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. And negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative uh, 1 times negative 2 is a positive 2. Again, we get 0, which is, again, good. And we can tell that x squared minus 2x minus 2 goes in that parentheses. Now, we know that this is going to give us a 0 of 1. We know that this is going to give us a 0 of negative 1. What we don't know is what this is going to give us. And the way that we should go about uh, solving this is doing the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula is never fun for too many people. So let's go ahead and do it as quickly as we can. x equals negative b, so that's negative, negative 2, plus or minus square root of negative 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times c, which is negative 2, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So negative negative 2 is 2, plus or minus. Now negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 2 is 8. 
and 2 times 1 is 2. So we got 2 plus or minus the square root of 12 over 2. We can simplify the square root of 12. Let's bring that up over here. We got 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3 over 2 because the square root of 12 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, so that would be 2 radical 3. And then I just split this up and say 2 over 2 plus or minus 2 radical 3 over 2. The 2's make it 1. The 2 radical 3 over 2 becomes radical 3. So my answer is 1, negative 1, and 1 plus or minus the square root of 3. Those are my x uh, zeros. Okay, this one's a lot of work because it's a fourth degree polynomial. It's also a lot of work because you got to use a quadratic formula. I promise you won't have too many problems like that we need to solve. All right, and now for the last one. Here we got another one. <clears throat> H of x equals x cubed uh, minus 2x squared uh, plus 9x minus 18. I'm going to just skip right to looking at the graph, okay, and I can see that 2 is a 0. When I see that 2 is a 0, that means I know that x minus 2 is a factor. And what goes in that other set of parentheses, I need to do some synthetic division. So let's put the 2 in the box. 1, negative 2, 9, negative 18. Skip a line, draw a line, bring down the 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Uh, that gives me 0, 0. 9, 18, 0, good. And now, because this is x squared, this is x and this is a constant, we really just have x squared plus 9. So x minus 2 times x squared plus 9 are our factors. Once I have that, I can set both equal to 0, say x minus 2 equals 0. And when I do that, I get x equals 2. I can also do x squared plus 9 equals 0, and then say x squared equals negative 9. And when I square root the left side and square root the right side, I get x equals plus or minus 3i. Complex zeros, real zeros, and those are my two answers. So this is an example of one where we have a synthetic division and we get into something where we're going to have non-real answers. We could have real answers, we could have non-real answers, we could have rational numbers, we have non-rational numbers or irrational numbers. So there's a lot of different ways that we can go about solving these. These are a couple of examples, and we'll put up some other videos of some other examples, but the best way that you're going to get at doing these is just working through the problems and doing synthetic division and trying to break them down yourself. So good luck, and we'll talk to you soon.